Thanks, guys. Good morning on a Friday morning. Fox News alert now because the United States is now planning to help Iraqis take back a key city from ISIS control. Here is what's being reported now. Up to 25,000 Iraqi forces plan on flushing out the terrorists in Mosul, upper right corner of that map, which lies near the heart of ISIS's territory in the northern part of Iraq. So good morning. I'm Bill Hammer, and welcome here to America's Newsroom. That's where we start today. Martha mm -hmm. has some time off. She How does. you doing? So I'm filling in for it. Nice to be here. I'm Heather Childers. Now, this offensive follows what has been months of targeted coalition airstrikes in both Iraq and Syria. The Pentagon says no U.S. troops will be on the ground, but the U.S. will provide support from the air. So Leland Vitter starts our coverage. He's live in Washington. Leland, first on the battle plan. And what do we know? What do we understand about this? Well, really, it's amazing how much we do know, Bill. This all centers around the critical city of Mosul, site of an embarrassing defeat for the Iraqi army last year. Now, U.S. planners and advisors say they will have the Iraqi army ready to fight by April or perhaps May. The battle plan calls for up to 25,000 Iraqi troops to attack Mosul. The Kurdish Peshmerga will operate as a blocking force to pin ISIS down. As we speak, U.S. soldiers and Marines are currently training about 3,400 Iraqi soldiers to be part of that attack. In the meantime, the U.S. and coalition air power will continue to pound away at ISIS targets. The problem, of course, is an old military adage. You cannot occupy ground from the air. ISIS, for their part, is changing tactics, making airstrikes even less effective. The military normally goes to great lengths to keep the battle plan secret. What is stunning here, Bill, is that they are making all these things public. And this, it was not a leak. It was a planned conference call with reporters by U.S. Central Command. So what's the reaction now? Military experts are saying what about that, Leland? Well, shock, disbelief, anger, pick an adjective here. From a strategic standpoint, this public battle plan could go one of two ways. Some ISIS fighters might retreat in fear before the attack, or it might just give the enemy more time to prepare their defenses. At best, it appears a very risky bet. We are aiding and abetting the enemy. I do not understand why the president and the administration want to aid and abet the enemy. It's still going to expose our forces to certain risk because they're going to be doing a lot of defensive preparations, IEDs, different force positions, knowing an attack is coming, all those kind of things that are going to make our troops more vulnerable. The timeline here is also critical. The Muslim holy month of Ramadan begins midsummer. The military says they hope to have Mosul back in Iraqi hands by then. A lot Bill. of questions on this. Thank you. Leland Vittert leading our coverage there in Washington. Heather has a few of those questions. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Coming up, we are going to talk with retired four star General Jack Keane. His thoughts on the planned offensive in Iraq. So stay tuned for that. Well, the U.S. now getting more involved in Syria, where extremism has flourished because of its devastating civil war. The U.S. and Turkey signing a new agreement to train so called moderate Syrian rebels. A U.S. official says the two countries will will provide an equal number of trainers. Former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton says, too little, too late. It's one of these uh, steps by the administration if they had taken three years ago might have made some difference. I'm very skeptical of what exactly is going to be involved here. Now, the trick in the past is finding these moderate rebels, but the Pentagon says it has already identified some 1,200 Syrian opposition fighters for potential training. Meanwhile, the critics are asking why the administration would reveal critical details about military strategy in Iraq, even giving a time frame for that matter. Bob Cusack, editor-in-chief of The Hill, with me now. Bob, good morning to you. Good morning, Bill. Republican Senator Tom Cotton, a Iraq War veteran with Megan last night on this. It's now become a matter of policy that this administration is going to announce war plans in advance. It only increases the risk. You have to wonder, given the uh, timing right after the summit on countering violent extremism, if this is the administration trying to get a PR win since this summit hasn't produced anything other concrete to justify the president's failures in counteracting the Islamic State. So he said a lot on that answer. First of all, the, the Pentagon apparently was talking about this last fall. Uh, what about that risk? Yeah, I mean, Bill, this is an unusual move. And remember, Iraqi forces have been playing defense. They lost Mosul. And there was concern last fall that they would lose Baghdad. And certainly that would be a huge uh, win for ISIS. So maybe this is a, a, a move to get basically on the offensive. But when you're telling your enemy that you're coming, uh, that's going to be trouble. I mean, if you look at what Tom Cotton said, 
you know, that spells trouble, I think, for the administration's effort uh, for the, the war authorization bill, because in there it says no enduring ground troops. Republicans, I think, are going to strip out that language, and I'm not sure that that measure is going to pass, because if you strip out that language, Democrats are not going to vote for it. But when you say no, no ground troops, well, Republicans, as Tom Cotton said, you, you don't tell the enemy what you're going to do. In a more specific sense, you say this week did not go as planned for the White House. Explain. Yeah, you know, I thought it was going to be a good week for the White House because of the Department of Homeland Security immigration issue, which they do have the advantage on. But then they had this summit on terrorism, and you had Eric Holder say, we are not at a time of war. A State Department spokeswoman, Marie Harf, suggesting you can't kill uh, ISIS by going to war with them. And then they had to play defense on that. So, And, and then you've seen Republicans uh, attack uh, the White House. And you've seen 2016 hopefuls be more aggressive. I mean, we're a war-weary country, but at the same time, if you look at the polls, the polls are changing, where most people now believe there should be ground troops to go after ISIS. And I think it's because of their barbarism and because of these attacks that have been shown uh, across, you know, uh, around the world on YouTube. Well, you're hearing a lot that ISIS is weakened. And specifically, maybe there is a town in Syria or Iraq where that has happened. But overall, in a general sense, is that the case when you hear headlines that 20,000 foreign fighters have now flowed into that part of the world? I mean, Bill, I think you got to be skeptical about it. The administration really was getting a handle, and st I think still getting a handle on what ISIS is. I mean, this group is very different than Al-Qaeda. Uh, Al-Qaeda didn't need land. ISIS wants land, but not necessarily a state. They think we're in the end of times, and an apocalypse is coming, and there's going to be an anti-Messiah that's going to be rising up. So uh, these guys, I don't think, have a lot of fear, and they are almost inviting uh, conflict where they feel like that would make them stronger and are able to recruit. And certainly their recruiting over the last year has been very strong. So I think when the administration, of course, President Obama calling them JV about a year ago, really didn't ha know where ISIS, what their goal was, what they wanted. So I, I think claims that they are weakened, you have to view a bit skeptically, Bill. Um, remarkable change in a year's time as well. Thank you. We're going to put some of these questions coming up with Jack Keen in a moment. Bob Cusack from Washington. Thanks. Thanks, Bill.